Hey folks, Mel the Train Shooter back in the studio and back with a bit of terrain lapping. Yes, uh, this is going to be a slightly different video from my normal videos. We're going back to something we used to do ages ago, which is messing about with stuff to figure things out. It's also going to be slightly shorter than our normal videos, because normally when I do my terrain lab videos, we do like a whole series of it of experiments over the course of a week or two and then I bring them all together for you. In this one I'm going to be doing a few little batches in a shorter video and then reaching out and getting your feedback and sort of connected and sort of getting right back rolling this week. Yeah so that's the battle plan. So what are we working on? Well we are terrain labbing with teddy bear fur. Yes if you come down we have the teddy bear fur. Yeah Terrainiacs have been known for years to wander the waste looking for lone teddy bears to savage and skin so we can use their furs, yeah, to make very realistic thatch roofing, yeah. And so, those of you who've been following the build I've been working on, it is my Burma Build Village and their foreground MDF kits, okay, that I am sort of jazzing up and, you know, doing my thing with, yeah. But they come with these MDF roofs. And the battle plan is, I want to enhance these roofs using teddy bear fur, yeah? So replace those, get something a little bit more thatchy. Now, I have messed around with teddy bear fur in the past, and I've got some good results. But my only real go-to is throw a bit of PBA on it, give it a bit of a brush, and let's go from there. There's a lot more techniques, there's a lot more stuff we can do with it. And since I'm working on this, it's the perfect opportunity. So, that's the battle plan. So, what are we actually going to be doing? Right, what I've got here is, I've got, at the minute, first sets. Yeah, three sets of three patches of teddy bear fur. They've been cut, they've been brushed to take off the excess fur, and basically get the same orientation on them. Now the idea is we're going to be adding various materials to them. So what I want to do with this one is I want to see how much PBA it takes to really toughen this up. Yeah, I want to mix some, uh, what shall it, some filler on here, some stucco. Also put some PVA with ISO on and see what results we get with those. I'm also going to be messing it up with my fingers, combing it, that sort of stuff and seeing what sort of results we get to get a bench line. Now what I'm gonna want from you guys and what I need for this to sort of work is I need you guys to throw your suggestions of try this Mel, what about this? What can you do with this? Can you get this effect? Saw this on that video, yeah? That's basically what I'm looking from you guys. Bit of feedback, get some information, we'll drill down, I'll do, do another video after this with everything pulled together and we'll get this nailed and then I can get it on top of the village and make it look awesome. So. I suppose, after that, whew, Carl, back in the saddle as you know, we better get cracked on and I better get some PVA made up. So, crack it on time. Right folks, I have mixed up some PVA and I've sort of set up my first set of experiments. Now what we've got is, we've got PVA, yeah, uh, one to six ratio, one part water, one part PVA, six parts uh, water, that's one part PVA, four parts water, and that's one part PVA, two parts water. Yeah, so we've got a bit of a mix. Now, I want to remind you that with Terrain Labs, nothing is set, yeah? Uh, PVA brands, they can vary in consistency from brand to brand over time and all sorts. So we're just getting a general guide for me to go off and then for me to give you a guide to go off. So remember, if it works out that, oh, this one works out the best, well, it might not be the best, yeah? It's about getting the guidelines for you. Anyway, I'm rambling. Come on then. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get this PVA on here. Now I know from, what you call it, past experience, that this is a nightmare job, what you call it, sort of getting watered down PVA on this sort of stuff. And as you can see, yeah, uh, probably better to actually hold it like that Let's try and soak it on. Now it's not actually taking that much of the solution. Yeah. Oh God, I'm on sticking already. I fixed these down with PVA and I think it may reactivate, which would be bad. Yeah, now that seems to have a decent amount on. Yeah. So let's scrump on one side and sort of get something. What I'm trying to do here is just See what effects I can achieve. 
yeah part of this is about me learning and how to use the material so every opportunity i get to sort of do some stuff with it i'm going to do some stuff with it now the next one is we need to comb it so i've got a comb yeah and well this is clearly for teddy bear fur because it's not for me is it <laughs> you can stop sniggering corbin my son is in the studio and he's giggling away in the corner yeah yeah so let's see if we can use this comb and just get some striations on here as well the reason why i'm doing this is because obviously i'm going to have to replicate this on the actual village and so i need to get some practice in so let's just do some basic striations see how they come out that's quite textured i'm going to try and get some different effects with different combs and stuff on the other ones what other combs have we got there right so moving on to the next piece yeah, let's give this a good soaking. Apologies for the little glitch there, guys. Right, let's get this soaked in. And this time what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to push the fibres up and make sure that I can actually get this well soaked into the actual underneath of the fabric and not just on the top, if you know what I mean. Now, none of this has a flow aid in. Yeah, we can throw that in in the next batch. Just to see how that turns out. So, that seems well soaked. Next job. See if we can put a comb through it. See what sort of striations we can get. Yeah. Well, that's combed better with this comb. Yeah, let's comb this one upwards. Oh, I'm knackered that side. Yeah, and then comb it back down, see if we can get a more rugged look. Does that work? Now, if we go over straight over with the full comb, we get quite a nice tech. All right, let's just roll with that, see how that comes out. Yeah, so as you see, that's actually quite a nice th thatch texture. I wonder. I wonder if we can replicate that layered look. Let's give that a go. Yeah, lift that up a bit. Back when I used to teach physiotherapy, well, sports therapy, I used to be sort of next to the beauty therapy in the hair department. And I've sat in when I had hair, yeah? You shut up. <laughs> I've sat in when I've had hair, yeah, as like a, a dummy for the barber class, so I know a little bit about combing. You just shut up. This is saying again. Right, yeah, so if we bring that down and just brush that over and we get like a ridge, yeah, what do you think? That looks like, that looks like layered, doesn't it? Yeah, all right. Okay, tell you what I'm gonna try and do. Since we're, we're experimenting, that's what this whole thing is about, yeah, is on this one with the thicker one. Let's see if we can get two lines in. Right, let's give it a go. Yeah, so this is our one, one part PVA, two parts water. So this will be the thickest of the lot. Oh, yeah. Is that, this is that thick. It's, I think this will be too thick. But we won't know till we do it. Ew, what's that? Right. Let's give this a go. Yeah. So, hold it horizontal, because that seems to work. Yeah. Saturate it. While squidging it around. To get it all the way. This, this looks like proper OTT. Yeah, that's it. Come on, in we go. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Right. So, combing time. Come over the comb. Yeah. Now we're not losing that much PVA as a comb it, which is good. We've got some interesting sort of like little bumps. 
It is lifting off, which I reckon is the PVA or just where it's not stuck properly. So I may, when it comes to sticking them down, I may have to come in and use something a bit better. Yeah, something that doesn't reactivate with, with water. So like a contact or a spray adhesive, like a latex adhesive. Yeah, so let's see if we can do this layering. Yeah. So comb that. Come in. Comb that. Come in. Comb that. I don't know if we're going to be. If I'm going. To... I may have to trim it. I may have to actually cut the cut it like I'm doing a barber's class. Just to get it a little bit. But what do you think? I mean, I think, what you call it, it's a little bit more rougher than that one because of the amount of PVA in it, to be perfectly honest. But we're starting to actually get this technique of getting this layered thatching on. So that's the PVA done, and it's time to move on to the next step. So I need to do a little bit of prep work. We need to mess around with flow aids. And I want to have a go at putting some stucco and some filler into the mix and see what that does to it. Because I've seen some good results out on the, on the shows and that sort of stuff, and we're having a play. So I'll be back in a mo. Right folks, prep work's done and we're ready for the next set of experiments. So what we've got here is, yeah, we've got a piece for uh, basically a uh, one to four PVA, yeah, with a bit of isopropic alcohol in as a flow aid, just so we can see what sort of effect that has on the mix. Then this one is actually a 50-50 mix of filler and water, yeah, with a little bit of PVA in. And this is a 50-50 mix of uh, Stuco Artex, yeah, with water, with a bit of PVA, just to help it bond. And so, let's work through. Now, first one is, I'm just going to whack this on. Uh, main thing when I put this on is how quickly and easily it soaks through compared to the others, which is a lot better, to be truthful. Yeah, so the ISO is definitely helping it sort of flow through the fibres and that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's using a lot more, which I'm taking as a, a sign that, you know, more of it is just flowing straight in. It's not sitting on the top and saturating it. And so this is actually going to take more volume with the ISO in because it's going to absorb more moisture due to it flowing better. Yeah, because we are really actually quite a bit more. Yeah, so there should technically be more PVA on here than the other ones. So let's see how this pans out. Yeah. Now that's pretty much used all of it compared to the previous one. So IPA definitely increases the amount of volume of PVA and fluids you can get in there. Quick home. I'm going to give it a harsh comb because I know that it's got the volume in there. See what striations we can get on it, eh? Ah, okay. I'm going to try and do a, a couple of levels. Yeah. That work? I'm not sure. We'll have to see. See how that pans out. I think this leveling, I need to see how it la lands out and then do it again from there. Right, so let's move on. Right, next one is our filler. And what you call it? Filler and water mix. 50-50 filler and water. And then with a dash of PVA in. Now, it has still got some blobules in. Filler and water doesn't really mix that well. So, well, that's gone out bloody quick. Oh, pardon my French, sorry. Look at that. Now I'm expecting this to seal and go hard, but have sort of a gritty texture, if you know what I mean. Because that's what the PVA crystalline should do to it. Now once again, this one has literally used everything in. Yeah. Okay. Let's give it a, a comb. How does it comb? 
This one I'm just going to comb straight down, just see if I can get some striations in it, and see what the filler effect is. I'm going to have to cut my combs in half, I think. That's an interesting texture, isn't it? I like that. What do we think? Yeah, a bit scraggy up here where I haven't soaked it as much, understandable, but... Ooh! Yeah, see where we're going? All right, that's more interesting with the filler in. Let's see how that pans out. Right, last one. Stuco, yeah, Artex, 50-50 Artex, with a dash of PVA for bonding, and much like the other one, I can still feel it's got blobs at the bottom. Quite a few, actually. So a bit more of a better stir. Right, let's layer this on. Let's get some of these blobs on with it, actually. Let's see what that does. Now oh, they're just getting brushed out anyway. Right, here we go. Now the Artex, Artex is well known for holding its shape and being quite solid and sturdy. So my hope is by mixing this in on the fill, we'll get the same gritty texture as that, but it'll be a bit firmer. Yeah, now that's soaked all that in pretty easily. And by the looks of it, it's gone all the way through. Next job, let's give it a comb. Yeah, so, comb flows through pretty easy enough. See if we can replicate that. All I'm doing now is just pushing up a little, is it? That's not bad, is it? Okay, the top bit's a bit naff. Right, so. PAVA and IPA, filler mix, stuco mix. And if we combine those along with our other ones, yeah, that are currently drying there, we should be able to get an idea of, you know, how much PVA we need to use and what the effects of mixing IPA, filler and stuka in with this. At the same time, I'm starting to get a handle on how to get the little layered effects and that's something we're going to work on. But, like I said, this is very much a collaborative yeah, sort of venture. I need you to jump down in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you should try. Let me know what you've tried. Let me know any videos you think I should check out. Yeah. Any techniques you'd like me to sort of explore. Yeah. And if you haven't got anything to say, just say hi. It's good to see you back because I'm enjoying it. It's nice to connect. Yeah. So uh, my job now is leave these to dry. Yeah. We'll come back uh, once they're dry. And we'll wrap this up. I'll get this on the channel for you. Well, that got a little bit chaotic. And to be truthful, I had to edit it down. It just turned into a rambly mess. But it was good having the lad in the studio. And it's been good finding my mojo while I've been messing around with these things and playing with other stuff. It can be difficult sometimes to find your sort of creative muse. Yeah. Uh, and I'm glad I'm finding it. Finding it enough to actually sit in front of the camera and come live with you guys and act like I know what I'm talking about, that's a whole new challenge. But we're getting there and I'm enjoying it. So let's get back down to our results. Now to recap, okay, we've got our PVA results here. Okay, and giving it a feel, one to six PVA to water. It's holding the texture. Yeah, but I think the moment you put any paint on that, yeah, it's going to lose it. Okay, one to four, definitely better. Definitely better. And I reckon, as long as you didn't saturate it, you'd be good. Yeah, one to two, that's solid. Except for where I've done these little raises, obviously, because they're raised up. But, you know, the actual details and everything, that is absolutely rock hard. Yeah, so to be truthful, feeling between the two, Go heavy with PVA. I mean, for the amount you're actually using and putting on it, 
I think this will give you a much sturdier. And I think, I think the factor here is, yes, you can use less amounts to fix it, but PVA is water activated. So if we start using acrylics, wetting it, that sort of stuff. I mean, if you hit it with a spray primer first, you're good to go. And then you could use less PVA. If you're going to be using any wet water based, yeah, uh, products, acrylics, etc., house paint. I think going heavy on the PVA is the way to go. Yeah, and using a much higher ratio. Because what you don't want to do is what you have your, your teddy bear, the PVA reactivate and lose all your striations that you're trying to create for your actual thatching. So, nailed that one. Now, next thing we need to look at is where we threw in IPA. Now, this was the one to four ratio. Yeah. But with IPA in. And this is definitely harder. Not as hard as that, to be truthful. That's a little bit harder, but that adds a significant amount more PVA in. So adding IPA into the mix definitely helps improve it, definitely makes it firmer. Yeah, right, now let's look at the fillers. So, yeah, we've got a filler mix and a stucco mix. Now, these are these are hard as hell. <laughs> Both of them. Yeah. I'm struggling to see that much difference between them to be truthful in the final effect. If anything, this is a bit cleaner with the stucco. It seems to have blended in a little bit bit better. This has left a, um, a slightly more rougher texture. Now, obviously, the striations on this we've I've managed to practice these, and these have turned out really well, but they're very quite thick, aren't they? You know what I mean? I think I think something like perhaps medieval or dark age, you know, bronze age, that sort of iron age, that sort of stuff, sort of hovel roofs, these would work well for, because they've got the sort of messy, sort of muddy, sort of thatchy look. Yeah, obviously this is a bit scraggy at the top, but you can see it down there. Yeah. I'm after a more finer look for my watch bullet for my Burma build roofs, but the effect does work. So we need to play with it more. And I do like it. It's really firm. Yeah, and there's very little. Yeah, it's always typical of me. End up working with filler and PVA in it. <sighs> right, so what have we got? Well. We know now, yeah, that we've got an idea of what sort of PVA ratio. We also know we've got stucco effects and, and filler mixes. We've got to practice the techniques of how to get more realistic lines and that sort of stuff. But I'm curious because I want to explore this more. So, guys, what I'm going to want you is your experiences and your questions in the comments. And if you've got no experiences on this or you're just happy to follow along, then just say hi, you know. It's good to be back, guys, to be perfectly honest. In the meantime, I'm not going to do the Patreon ramble and all that sort of stuff. You know the links are going to be on the screen and all that sort of stuff. What I want to do is just say, uh, keep up with this. Keep up with this? As you can see, I haven't done this in a while. What I mean to say is, I'm going to be rolling this through this week and doing more experiments because I've got, you know, more teddy bear fur. But... I'm going to be cracking on tomorrow with that sort of stuff. So when you get the comments on this video is what I'm going to be going off. So just basically chat with us, guys. In the meantime, I'm rambling. I've been out of practice. It's good to be back. All the best, yeah? Ta-da.